In this episode, I want to talk about the C++ string library and the string class. We use uh, strings quite a bit uh, when we are programming. And I think you'd fi you'll find that uh, using just a regular char uh, way of um, constructing strings in C++ to be a little bit unwieldy. Uh, and um, so what, what I want to look at is the string class because there's a lot of nice little convenience functions, various other things that uh, make uh, processing of strings a lot easier uh, and make it a lot more like uh, how strings are processed in Java. As a matter of fact, I guess uh, Java you know, doesn't really use the care star um, at all, or I, I guess you can if you wanted to. Uh, uh, actually, no, you can't uh, because there are no pointers. Uh, uh, but uh, in C++, uh, we have the option of doing both, uh, both care star as well as using the string class. Uh, but, um, you know, the string class uh, that we'll look at here is actually quite nice, um, and it does a lot of things that uh, make uh, string processing a lot easier. So, uh, some preliminaries here. Um, you need to make sure that you do a pound include of the string uh, library. So use these, uh, these angle brackets, well, pound include and angle brackets string. And then also, uh, I believe you need to do the using namespace standard in order for the string class to be viewable uh, as just a string without having to provide the uh, scoping operators. Now, the uh, string class defines several methods um, to make it convenient for manipulating strings. Uh, this includes creation of strings and assignment of strings, as well as concatenation uh, operations so that you can join several strings together. There are also some really nice comparison operators, um, some substring manipulation operations, and then also an ability to do um, some string stream processing so that you can do um, sort of this construction of, of larger strings without having to use concatenation. And this is actually really helpful when um, when you find that you have several different places where you need to sort of build up strings from smaller strings. So uh, there are basically four different ways um, to construct strings. So four different constructors that are available. I have examples of them on the right-hand side of this slide. Um, the first one is sort of the default way of defining a string where you uh, give the name of uh, whatever the variable is going to be and then what the value of the string will be. So in this example here, I have string and then text is the name of the variable and then the value of that um, string is hello. You can also have an empty string. So here I have uh, declared something called text empty and it has no value. So when you try to print that, it'll be an empty string. There's also a copy constructor that allow you to provide the name of some other string in parentheses um, so that you have a copy of the string. There's also a repeated characters uh, constructor. So in this example here, we have a string called name. First parameter there is an integer 8, and then uh, the second parameter is x. And what this will construct is a string that is 8 characters long, where all of the characters are the letter x. Finally, you can use an assignment constructor. So you assign the string equal to um, some constant character um, string. So here we see that um, that this, the string called month uh, is set or initialized to the value March. Now there are um, there are some very good convenience functions available in C++ and available for the string class. One of them is this ability to copy strings into character array strings or into co um, character star arrays. Uh, and there's actually some reasons that you want to do this. One of the most important is that many library functions require that you use char star rather than using a um, rather than using the string class. And so you need to be able to get a copy of, of this care star um, part of a string um, so that you can pass it, for instance, to some other function. So here on the right-hand side, I've, I've provided an example 
where string 1 is initialized to the string strings. Uh, and then uh, we use the length operation for the string, or for string 1, to get the length. And then we declare a new character star pointer uh, equal to an array of characters of length plus 1. And the reason we need that plus 1 is so that we can add the, um, the null character at the end of the string, or the null termination at the end of the string. Once you've done something like this, then you can copy the contents of, the st of string 1 into the character star pointer 2, in this case, uh, and then you give, uh, so the destination, in this case pointer 2, the length, so the number of characters that you're copying, um, and then the destination, so where in the, where in the array do you want to copy it, and generally you're going to put it at the beginning, so you'll start at 0. Uh, and then the last thing that you need to do to complete this is to make sure that you null terminate the string uh, by um, adding the, uh, the backslash zero to the end. Uh, and so that, um, by setting that to pointer two at length equal to that character, um, you'll properly terminate the string. And some of the operations... Um, that are included in the library include this ability to, uh, to use the C in operation for doing string extraction of a string value from the keyboard. Um, so uh, you can just declare a string. In this case, on the right-hand side of the example, uh, we have the string object, um, the string called string object, and we're using the C in operation to get input from the keyboard and place that, the value of that input into the string, string object. Now the extraction operation of CN will terminate when the first white space delimiter is encountered, so a space for instance, or a carriage return, or a tab. Uh, if you want to get the full line of text uh, using CN, then you should use the get line operation. Um, and get line is actually um, a uh, an operation that I think that is available in the string class or in the string library. And so what you do is you, you say get line, uh, you provide the name of the stream, in this case it would be cn, which is the, the keyboard, and then you give it the name of the string where the, the data is going to be stored. Uh, the string class or the string library also has um, operations for doing assignment and concatenation. Uh, so uh, if you look on the right-hand side of this slide, uh, if I've created three strings, text 0, text 1, text 2, text 3, we can do a copy construction or a copy assignment of the value of text 0 into text 1. So that will create a new copy of the string text 0 and put it into uh, the string text 2. You can also do an assignment with, uh, with the assignment method, which basically does the same thing as using the assignment operator. And then finally, you can do concatenation uh, with the plus operation, the plus operator. So we can construct text 4 at the bottom of this slide by uh, concatenating text 0 and text 3. And what we would get then, in this case, is hello world. Uh, and with the space, because I did put a space at the end of hello up at the top. There are comparison operations that you can use to compare strings. Um, the most common ones are the ones shown here on the left-hand side, the less than, the greater than, and the double equals. Uh, the, the comparisons are based on 